Hey, Songtown, welcome. I'm Clay Mills here with Marty Dotson. Woohoo! We got a fun topic today, Marty. I'm going to read comments from our viewer, Ben. Oh, nice. Um, and I'm just going to throw these at you. I don't okay. want you to know what I'm going to. All right. Let's deal with this. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> the first one. Research has actually shown that creativity is best done sober. What are they talking about? Um, no, I'm kidding. Um, this is a response because we did a, a video where Marty quoted Ernest Hemingway and said that, write drunk, edit sober. Marty, were you really talking about getting drunk before you write a song? No. <laughs> See, the idea here is that being drunk lowers your inhibitions. And so the idea is when you write, lower your inhibitions, don't critique yourself, don't edit, just be free. Right. To say whatever you want, you, you know what I'm saying? To be creative, maybe to be crazy. You know, when we write songs, we have a great time and we laugh a lot because we're saying crazy stuff all the time. But if you're if you're too sober minded, yeah, not s just literally sober. If you're too sober minded, then you're going, well, we can't use that. We can't use that. We can't use that. Right. You know, why are you throwing out these lines, you know, that, that are goofy? And so the idea is not to drink while you write. We want you to write responsibly. <laughs> but to lower those inhibitions, let yourself be free and a little bit wild and crazy maybe when you're writing. Yeah, just write as if you were drunk. With yes. that with that kind of mentality. Would that be a metaphor? Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> was it an analogy? <laughs> analogy. I don't um, know. We we need the word of the day. We haven't done that in know. a while. We need to analogy. Analogy. Word of the day. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, but yeah, I I found it comical because you made that one quote in the video, and we've got like six or seven comments, you know, saying Marty, you should get help if you've got a drinking problem. <laughs> and like, no, I mean people would be surprised. You know, I've been pro songwriter for a few decades now. Very rarely have I been on a writing session where someone showed up and they were drunk. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's it takes a lot of your mental ability to create a song in a day that is just firing on all cylinders and is a great song. I, I would find it hard to believe you could show up drinking every day and pull that off. Yeah. Yeah, so Absolutely. just to set the record straight. Yes, right, okay. responsibly is your tip for the day. Yes. Um, oh, this one got me. I made the comment um, about doing, you know, you have to work hard to, to make it in the music business. Someone says, don't you love it when someone who doesn't have to work tells you to just work harder? Most people have real responsibilities. <laughs> oh, my gosh. First of all, dude. You don't know who I am. You don't know who Marty is. <laughs> Second of all, I stand by that no matter what level you're at, whether you're trying to write your first big song or you've written 20 big songs, you're, if you're going to keep going, you're going to have to work your ass off. I mean, yeah. it's, it's just no way around it. I was, and, you know, I was just speaking from experience of what it took for me starting out having a family, working a regular job, and writing all night. You know, I literally didn't sleep in my 20s. It just, you know, it, it, it was hard work. Yeah. So I can't say what's going to work for you, and I certainly don't think that all it takes is hard work. It's, you know, it takes a lot. There's luck involved, but I think the more you work, the more luck you create. Well, I would stand by the statement. I've, I've not seen any people that are successful songwriters that didn't really work hard to get there. Exactly. You know, so yeah, people may um, look at a successful songwriter and go, well, what do you have to do? You know, it's like nobody throws us a bone because we've had success in the no. past. You know, I mean, we still got to write a great song to get it on a record, you know? So if Kenny Chesney's going to cut my song, it's got to be great. It doesn't matter that I've had a number one with him before. He's not going to cut a crappy song of mine 
just to do me a favor, you know. Is he going to put out that song he cut of yours, that End of the World song? I've got two songs that he's cut, I'm waiting to see if he puts them on his next record. Please, Kenny, please. <laughs> I tell you what happened to me one time is somebody cut a song and it didn't see the light of day for a few years, and then they put it on a Greatest Hits album. So you never know. Like, mm. he could decide at one point to do a Greatest Hits record and your songs are the two singles. Wouldn't that be great? Nice. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it reminds me too of um, Diamond Rio was a, a country band uh, in the '90s, and yeah, I, I had known those guys, some of them in college, and they worked like at Opryland when the Opryland Theme Park was there. They were mm -hmm. playing shows like they probably did twenty shows a week or something crazy at, at Opryland. They were touring uh, in a van. You know, I mean, they were not living a glamorous life at all. And then when they get their record deal, their first single came out and it went number one. And in an interview, somebody said, well, what's it like being an overnight success? <laughs> and they go, been a hell of a night. <laughs> and their point was, we've worked our tails off to get here, yeah. you know? It, and so we stand by that statement. We just haven't seen people waltz in, become hit songwriters, and they don't have to work hard. E even yeah. Ashley Gorley, who's had 60-plus number ones, works really hard yeah you know yeah i was having a conversation on a demo session this morning with a publisher and he was telling me that half of his writers know how to grind that's how he he put it they're grinding and he goes the other half are super talented but they just will not work and he's like they're they're not going to make it you know and so it's super important if you're trying to you know, and I certainly understand having responsibilities, and it doesn't stop. You know, you, you're always going to have responsibilities. Um, for instance, with us in Songtown, we have employees, we have people that we we have to look out for and take care of, and and be accountable to. So it doesn't stop. But I think that just know that if you're going to make it in the music business, you're working for yourself, and it's kind of like owning your own pizza shop. You're going to be there working later than anyone else. I mean, it's just the way it is. It's your business. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. The next next thing I have on my list. Come That's on. the next thing on my list. <laughs> that was an old song by Toby Keith. Okay. I don't play songwriter nights because someone might steal my ideas. You know, I mean, we we run into people all the time that are just worried to death about people stealing their ideas. And you know you can't copyright a title. So if I if I have something that has a really creative title that I've never heard, maybe I don't play it out. Yeah. But you can't make it in anywhere in the business and not play your songs for people. Yeah. So you're going to have to have exposure, to, you know, by playing your your songs somewhere for somebody. And my first publisher always said, "Write it so good they can't they can't beat it." Yeah. You know and. And he kind of put it back on me. It was like, instead of worrying about everybody else, worry about writing that idea so good that if they took their your title, they can't write it better. Right, exactly. You know? Yeah, it's kind of hard to steal something that you don't own because you cannot copyright a title. You don't own an idea. And if you write it so well that someone else can't write it better, then, yeah, that's the best. I haven't heard that before, but I like that approach. I think... You know, I think I was that way when I started out. I was so afraid somebody was going to steal my ideas. And I think that falls into that trap we talked about before, the arrogant songwriter trap. Because, I mean, gosh, those first songs I wrote, for me to think that they were so good that some pro writer or some pro artist out there who works with the best people in the world is going to think my idea just starting out is better and they've got to steal it. You know, it's like, so it's a little bit of arrogance when we're starting out. Um, I had a thought on it too. Okay. I mean, uh, another thing my first publisher said, he he was like, because I think I was saying to him, well, I heard this song, it's really similar to my song, you know. He goes, well, where did you get that idea? And I said, well, it's from a quote from Abraham Lincoln or whatever. And he goes, so you think you're the only one <laughs> that ever read that quote from Abraham Lincoln, and he said, you stole it from Abraham Lincoln with that logic, <laughs> you know? So, so very little of our th 
thought and our ideas are original. They're all derivative of, you right. know, we heard someone say something and we turned it into a song or we read a quote and we turned it into a song, you know? So I think understanding that all these, this pool of ideas are out there and we're all searching in that same pool. You know, I tell people sometimes where I go to find my ideas. So yeah. we're going to be reading the same things. And it doesn't mean they stole my idea or I stole their idea. It's just that, you know, we're all fishing in the same pond. One time I finished a song and it was the most original title I thought that the world had ever seen. And me and my co-writer, we play it for our publisher. He was blown away. Five minutes later, across town, another publisher calls him and goes, you won't believe the idea my writers wrote today. It was the same freaking title. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they didn't hear ours. Yeah. I didn't hear theirs. I, and we both thought it was the most you know, original title. His publisher was so fired up, he called my publisher. You're not going to believe this great title that you know just got mm -hmm. turned in. And my publisher's like, well, pal, my writers turned that in five minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> so, yeah, you can't copyright an idea and was it Steve Martin that says you just you have to be so good they can't say no they can't deny you or something like yeah, that yeah yeah the final thing okay we had an episode about um where you said in there you're just so controversial man <laughs> you <laughs> said me, yeah. if you don't like the music out there then write better songs and that's kind of the pro mindset that we have as songwriters that do this for a living is yeah we've got to write better songs than than what's out there we don't want to write songs equal to the average songs um mm. but someone wrote in and they were like better songs don't matter it's all opinion and the only thing matters is if you have you know a billion dollar company who's promoting your song and shoving it down the throats of listeners. It was this long rant about great songs don't matter. Man, I've, how do you feel about a statement like great songs don't matter? Well, first of all, I think people, I've, I've never heard a successful person say that statement. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, it's bitter, unsuccessful yeah. people who are saying that. And the thing, is, you know, my experience in my 25 years of doing this is if, if I write an amazing song and I get it in front of anybody that's reputable in the business, that song's going to find a home. The problem is I don't write amazing songs every day. Right. I don't write amazing songs every 100 song that I write. You know, and you know, I'm trying to build up a sync catalog. And so someone asked me recently, well, how many placements has your sync person gotten you? And I said... None, but I don't think it's the sync person's fault. The sync right. person's very successful getting sync placements. It's Marty that's not successful yet right. getting sync placements. And so it comes back to me of like, I can complain about that and blame it on them, or I can learn to write better sync songs. Yeah. So I'm working on writing better sync songs. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I started out in the ad business in New York City, and I literally competed for spots on TV and radio, you know, commercials for two and a half years before I landed my first one. And, and I was working at it every day. You know, it just took a while to lock in. And then I started getting, then I was on a roll. Um, but it takes time to lock into. Heck, when I moved to Nashville and wanted to be a songwriter, even after I signed my first publishing deal, it took me five or six years before I had a hit song maybe seven. I was writing every day. And, you know, somebody could go, well, what's your publisher doing for you? They got you a big hit yet? Yeah. And I didn't think like that. I kept thinking, I've got to write better songs. I've got, you know, you got to put it at some point on your own two shoulders. Yeah. You have to take responsibility for your career and you have to make it happen because no one else is going to make it yeah. happen for you. You know, and my response when someone says, you know, it's all opinion. Last year at the Songtown Birthday Bash, we do it every year in October, we had someone, three or four publishers listening to songs from the audience. Someone played a song, and at the end of the song, there was just dead silence. Everyone in that room had goosebumps. They were like, whoa, 
that was an amazing song. That's what you're trying to write. Yeah. You're trying, there was not a person in that audience that did not recognize that that was a great song. Yeah. They heard 40 other songs that day and did not get that reaction. Yeah. So if you're trying to make it as a writer, those are the kind of songs you're trying to write, you know? You write one of those, then it gets you attention, and 20 years later, maybe if you write a good song, it can get cut, and you don't have to write great songs every time, you know, but you got to work up to that point, you know? Yeah, I mean, I think the mistake most of us make is that, you know, if, if you're serious about this and you've been doing it for a long time and you've educated yourself and, and you work hard at it, you're probably writing good songs. Yeah. But it takes better than good songs to get a song cut, generally, you know, unless you know the artist or have some connection, you know. But I still believe that if you write that amazing song, it doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter how old you are, doesn't matter where you live, yeah. it'll find a home because it it's undeniable. Like you said, you'll play it for people. And, you know, several several of my number one songs, we pitched them one time because we, we pitched them and the person went, that's a hit. Yeah. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to get that cut as opposed to... But Marty, to, you were a hit writer. Of course they're going to cut it. I, I love no, that. No, even my first one. That's you know? what I'm saying. Yeah. When... It's to the point where every single successful songwriter I've ever known personally, you and me included, that our first hit, nobody knew who we were. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't because, you know, we had a lot of money. I didn't have any money. It wasn't because we had a lot of connections. No one literally knew who we were. It was the song that opened the door. So people can say to me, great songs don't matter. I know from personal experience, and I know from all my friends, that a great song is what unlocked the door for them. And if you don't believe it, then I think you're taking your power away. Because the power you have as an aspiring songwriter is any day you could sit down and write a song that will change your life. Mm -hmm. I've seen it happen over and over in my life, your life, other people we know. So that's what you got to hold on to. Don't let that negativity creep in of the system's rigged and this and that. It doesn't matter how rigged a system is. I'm telling you, a great song will overcome any of that stuff. And the, the only person in the music business you can affect really in any way is yourself. Yeah. And so... Owning, like, if I'm not getting the results I want, I need to write better. So let me figure out how to write better. Yeah. You know, that's been the only answer for me. Every single time when I've gone, you know, I don't just don't like where things are going. I feel like I'm in a lull here or a rut, you know, blaming the plugger or the publisher or all those people hasn't helped me one bit. No. The only thing that's helped me is going, okay, Marty. <laughs> You know, put on your big boy pants and acknowledge that your, maybe your songs are feel a little bit dated now. You need to get up to date on what you, you know and finding ways to tweak what I'm doing. It's been the only thing that's changed my outcome. Yeah, it's just a professional mindset. I mean, think about a professional sports team. Their star running back goes down with an injury. Well, they don't go, well, yeah, you know, that player, he was dirty, took out our guy and our season's over. No, they're like, somebody else has got to step up. Yeah. Our, we've got to take responsibility as a team. We have to put our best foot forward, and somehow, some way, we're going to make it happen. So I think that's the mindset. Yeah. If it was the kicker that went out, <laughs> putting the best foot forward would be literal. <laughs> like, we got to put our best foot forward to be the kicker. Yeah, exactly. Just thought I'd throw that. That was bonus. Yeah. Hey, Sweetwater, if you're listening, Sweetwater, we appreciate you. We appreciate you sponsoring this podcast. We appreciate all the help you've given Marty and me over the years buying our gear. Well, actually, you didn't buy it. I bought it. Marty bought, <laughs> yeah, it. bought it. But you helped us buy it yep. with your knowledge and expertise. We appreciate you, Sweetwater. Um, and you guys, if you are in the market for any musical equipment, check them out because they have great prices. 
They have the best staff, the best knowledgeable staff, and they'll help you out. Check out songtown.com. We have over 800 videos, lessons. We have mentors there that can help you out to get you writing at your best level. Once you're ready, once your songs are ready, we can help you get connected to the music business. See you soon. Cheers. Cheers.